Last summer, I flew out to Rolla, Missouri to finally film a video with one of my woodworking aviation heroes, Culver Props. And Elena is the third generation in her family making airworthy wooden propellers. It's always so fun. One of my favorite parts of this job is like, I see people building stuff on the internet and then I get to see their space for real. When did you take over? So, Grandpa died in 2016. And then my dad and my husband helped me for another two years. And then they took jobs in the concrete industry. And that's when it was just me, Granny, kids. I mean, they were little, littler back then, but we made it work. Do they help? Sometimes, mm -hmm. like they'll vacuum for me or they will they'll glue for me, things like that. But as far as let me sand, not really. <laughs> not yet. They, did, they do sand little miniature props for their teachers, so. I'm surprised <laughs> at how many people have nothing to do with aviation, but want a propeller. Okay, so this is all the information we got from the owner of the Pete and Pole that we're gonna fly this prop on. And then this is Elena's magical translation. This speed chart is for pitches that are for my profile. So when you see a prop and it's stamped, say, 72 by 40, 76 by something, the first number is the diameter, and then the second number is going to be your pitch. The pitch means it's 42, let's say, inches of pitch. And what that's gonna mean is for every single rotation that that propeller makes, his airplane is gonna move 42 inches forward, assuming no slip. Um, Pete and poles have a little bit of drag, so we can assume that he's not gonna get exactly that distance, that 42 inches, because there will be some drags. So you will hear people talk about angles of the blade. An angle of the blade is what you use to get inches of pitch, but an angle of the blade and pitch are not the same thing. So what we're gonna look here is, we're gonna look at this 25. This is what I call my speed chart. The customer at 2350 so that's gonna be this line so for his max numbers and he said he red lines at like 93 so we're gonna be in this area too and it puts us pretty much in the same pitch area Before we start really getting into it, a quick word from the sponsor of today's video. As you guys already know, I am always doing something all of the time, from building a actual propeller and flying it to launching rockets or just exploring the great outdoors on weekends with my friends. So I needed a pair of shoes that could keep up with me rain or shine, and that's why I'm excited to talk about today's sponsor, Vessi. What makes Vessi awesome is that their shoes are made for all day wearing with four-way stretch material and Dymatex technology, which make the shoes 100% waterproof. So it doesn't matter if I'm hiking or taking my boat out or going to the beach, my feet are dry and cozy. Wearing Vessi's allows me to be my absolutely whimsical self and I don't have to worry about what the weather is like before I step outside and enjoy nature. We all need some time outside and what better way to do that than putting on your shoes and just stepping out the front door. It's great because if they get muddy, they just rinse off and I'm good to go back out. Now that I have Vessi shoes, I welcome the weather. Take advantage of Vessi's Memorial Day sale and save up to 30% on a variety of Vessi styles by going to Vessi.com slash Xylofoxalin. In case you missed the sale, you can still enjoy a 15% discount by using the code Xylofoxalin at checkout. Don't wait too long to grab your favorite Vessi shoes. Now let's build this propeller. What I'm looking for is any imperfections. I'm looking for any splits, any knots, any cracks. Um, any uneven things um, like the planer would leave mm -hmm. so you can feel it. We will plane this quickly just to clean it up and it opens the grain so all sorts of good stuff there. It'll just take a minute. Once the boards were planed, I dug out the template for this style of prop and we got to tracing. Now, the templates get nailed down to pin them in place and then those nail holes will serve as guides later for alignment dowels.
So I did the first three and now Elena's gonna truly flex and uh, you'll see how easy she makes it look. <laughs> And if you want to see true bandsaw artistry, give Culver Props a follow on Instagram or YouTube or something because Elena is a wizard on the bandsaw with 12 foot boards like I have truly never seen before. Perfection. That was also so fast. You did that in like two and a half minutes flat. Like 17 years of work. <laughs> you can compare. This one is Elena's, and these ones are mine. You can't see the line on hers. <laughs> So we're gonna use this hole to pin all of these together. So that way all of our centers will be aligned. And then after we have it pinned in the center, we'll clamp the ends and then we'll put a down rod through them to secure them through the end because it gets cut off. To prep for gluing, we gave each contact surface a quick sand and then we got to mixing up the glue. Now this glue is a pre-catalyzed powdered urea resin. Um, so it needs to be reconstituted with water before each use. But then after that, it just rolls on like normal glue. There we are. So we'll glue this side, this side, flip it over like a sandwich, this side, this side, flip it over like a sandwich. And thus began gluing with some of the best trained help around. I'm gonna let you set your side down first so I don't smash your fingers. Day one. After a night in the press, it's time to pull the blank out and start making it propeller shaped. Okay, so we need to sand this smooth um, because when we okay. lay it on the drill press, we don't want any kind of wiggle. If we have any kind of wiggle here um, and our drill bit doesn't go in completely perfectly straight. perfectly straight, then our bolt pattern will be wonky as well. Wonkity is a word. This flat side is the side that goes to the engine. This is the side you're going to bolt to your engine. So we are going to drill it this side up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to align the very, very tip of this with the holes that we drilled earlier. It's now time to drill out the bolt pattern so that the propeller can actually get bolted to the engine itself. Little propeller loft. 
Okay. This is a woman in her natural habitat. <laughs> so I probably have like 300 patterns total. I organize them by hub thickness first, then diameter, then right or left hand rotation, and then by pitch. So I have a little bit of organization, but I don't really have as much room as I need. But anyway, <laughs> so for the prop that we're making today, I looked at it and we need a 72, and then I'm looking for the correct rotation, which is right hand rotation, a pitch that is close to what we're looking for, and then I'm also looking for a pattern that I like. One of the advantages of having a girl make your prop, like I want it to all look good together, so I usually, I like seeing the airplane before I make the props. Pete and Pole is a classic design, and I do like a scimitar profile for it. So. That made me decide that I like this one. So we'll go chuck it up in the lathe. We will just put it all in the lathe now. It's so fun to see this lathe in person. I've been like ogling it for years. <laughs> You just have to listen to the machine. Does anything sound ugly? Does anything sound off? Does anything sound like it wants to fly apart? Or is anything growling? <laughs> Abby, what do you think? Anything sound ugly? Abby approved. So what I'm making sure of here is that the center of this, when it rotates, is in the center of the stroke here. That is going to clamp our carriage to the chain that's going to pull it oh. down as it rotates. So this is going to rotate it and then this chain is going to pull it down. And so essentially we're just going to corkscrew all the material that is not a propeller off. And with one side shaped, we left the template exactly as it is in the lathe and then flipped the propeller around, guaranteeing that the two sides will be identical. So James made this little stair stepper for me and like hmm. about one to two of these equals about one inch of pitch. So we need to go in about four. So I'm going to put it right about there. Okay. Let's see what that does. So if you take a look, you can see that it cleaned really well all the way across, so. Twelve point five tangent times pi times fifty-four, which is the double of twenty-seven, which would give us thirty-seven point six. And we're looking for thirty-eight. So we are gonna call that good.
Okay, so basically you'll just lay this on here and like we said, 36. I make a mark at 36, then I put this on here and draw the half circle. We have our SAE one bolt pattern, which is what our customer said he had, with which is four and three eighths on the spread, which is here. And then we have three eighths bolts, and that's what these are. I tape over the other ones, otherwise I'll get distracted. So the bolt pattern is lined up so that the laser runs through the center of the tip center of bolt, center of this bolt, center of that bolt, and then the center of that tip. Okay, so this is a prop flange and this is your bolt pattern and these are um, what when you ask for your counter bores this is the diameter that I'm asking for so you have your prop bolt that goes in here but this is your counter bore your drive lugs there's lots of different names for them but basically we need to recess the prop for those to sit in there and they're just extra centering pins is all they are So you put the heavy blade to the top and then take your pencil down there. You mark your heavy side with an X. Now flip it around and do your sides again. Okay. Good. Well done. Yeah. Then you sand then you on sand it. it. And then you do this again and then you sand on it and then you do it again. And then cool. you do it until you decide, I've got it and it's a miracle or I hate this thing, I'm definitely gonna cut in half and put in the fireplace. And once the bolt pattern is done, the last step is balancing the prop. And this is the most important and time consuming part of prop making. It determines whether or not the prop is airworthy. Like it has to be perfectly balanced horizontally and vertically in order to fly. This balancing act involves sanding both the hub and the blades. So the hub affects the vertical balance more and then the blades will affect the horizontal balance. Okay. Now I just need to take way more off of this edge. Do you think this is it? I think it's it. There we go. Yeah. Oh. This is Culver Props approved. Approved. <laughs> now we made a bunch of wind and we messed it up, but yeah. <laughs> it's legit. Look at that. I think my face oh my is right here. Right, right. <laughs> We're both too short. We're like hiding behind the I'm so short. <laughs> we made a prop. Serial number. And to sign it off, we stamped on a serial number and the prop specs. Seventy two by thirty eight. And just like that, it was time for me to head back to Southern California where I was gonna put this prop on a friend's peat and pole and finally give it a test flight. All right, so we 
are at Fox Airfield in Lancaster, California, and we're gonna test this propeller. Yeah, Dad and I built it. First flight, March of 72. And then my daughter helped me rebuild it back in 2000. Both of the daughters helped, the younger one mostly. How long did it take you with your dad to initially build it? Two years and three months. And it's all scratch built, different plans. Hey, it's a gorgeous little airplane. Thank you. Want to see this prop I made you? Sure. Be a surprise. Well, that's pretty. Beautiful job. What kind of wood you use? This is maple. Maple? Yeah. I never want to like insert myself in someone else's nope. airplane. I feel. You're welcome to. I was really. You can't hurt it. I was really bummed because like I mine is certified so. Yeah, working on airplanes made me like hyper conscious of uh, cross threading. Yeah. So just feed it through here. The side needs to come around this side. Yep. So the basic premise of safety wire is not only to keep the bolts in, but also each of these is tugging them tighter. So like as things move, they're not gonna back out. If anything, they're gonna get a little bit tighter. And that's, so it's kind of an art form. There's not much to pre-flight on this. You basically <laughs> check the oil and the gas. And mm -hmm. 